Okay, go ahead. Oh, I was just wondering about the analyze when it's saying what liabilities does the business have after other transactions? Which ones would we oh. really be looking at here? Okay, so before I get to that part, uh, accounts payable is your only liability, right? Okay. And so that would be 24700 and I'll get to that kind of like after our break time because I want to talk about this thing again called the account balance. And so remember the account balance means it's either the debit or the credit side, it's the increase side. But if this is our only liability, then whatever balance we have in there is going to be what we owe. So in this problem, when they ask us for analyze, it says, what liabilities does the business have after all the transactions have been recorded? You just go back and look at your accounts payable and say, well, 24,700. You plug this in right here. And then of course, I'm not gonna click check. I know that's the right answer, but, but that's basically how you have to do it. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, so it's about 8-11. Um, let me give you guys about a 10 minute break or so. Um, I come back. There's a couple more things I wanna talk about with this particular problem. And then there's another problem I'll work with you as well. Just, it's, it's a very, it's a long one, but it, it's also going to take us to the financial statements. Um, I will also talk about the, some exam specifics after our break. I'll do that first. And then we'll simply talk about this problem. And then I want to do another problem with you as well. Just to, just again, just for practice on debits and credits. Okay. So it's about, I got 812. Let's shoot for about, I'll just do right at 10 minutes. How about 822? Take a quick break, 822. I'll go ahead and pause this for a moment and then come back. We'll finish up this problem. We'll talk exam and then I'll do another problem with the class. So you can think of some stuff to ask me if you're still not getting it. All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this, take a 10 minute break, come back and then we'll just, we'll continue.
All right, that's a quick 10 minutes. Um, <clears throat> I hope everybody is back. Um, I had a few okay. questions. Uh, it looks like I did a few things wrong on this um, number 10. I put um, J 5,800 in my credit side of cash. And it looks like it was supposed to go somewhere else, but. Uh, it should be accounts payable. Accounts payable. And then I also put um, P twenty nine hundred um, debit um, the twenty nine hundred for P on office furniture. So what? Wait, what letter are we on now? Um, I, I went to um, P the twenty nine hundred. Okay, letter um, P. You had twenty nine hundred on partial payment, so that would have been cash and accounts payable, right? Yeah. So you would have debited accounts payable. And then credit cash for twenty nine hundred. Okay. What did you do? Um, I accidentally put um, debit office furniture for P. Okay. Yeah. So that debit, remember, you'd already bought it. You're just paying the bill. So that office furniture would have already been included in the asset account. On letter P, the only thing that letter P is doing is it just it, you're just decreasing your cash and then decreasing your debt, okay? So yeah. the mistake that you made, which is, it's a common mistake, if you would have put that 2,900 back into office furniture again, um, or yeah, office equipment, I guess office furniture, um, you're basically saying that you bought more furniture, right, by doing that. But in this case, you're clearly not buying more furniture, you're just paying what you owe. All right. So if you think about that logic, sometimes I think when you go back and think about it, um, it should make sense. All right. That's how I did it. You know, back in the day when I'm learning all this stuff, um, I learned, you learn from your mistakes. And it's always good to ask because, you know, if I did something, I don't, you know, you can click these things and connect until they give you the correct answer, but it doesn't mean you're learning it. So I would almost rather get something wrong and then figure out why I'm getting it wrong rather than just to get something right, just to get the points. If yeah. I get something right, just because I got lucky, that's not gonna help me on the test. So I would rather just get it wrong every time and say, okay, why am I not, what am I not seeing? And then, you know, let's talk about it. All right, that's what this is about. And then you said for J, the 5,800, um, the purchased additional office shares for 5,800 received credit during the 30 days, it goes under accounts payable. I already had that. So does that mean it goes, what, what other category would that, go with okay so you have accounts payable and then that would be office furniture right there so would that be credited or well ask yourself so what are you doing with uh, with office furniture like that's you're an asset adding, you're just adding to your okay, in, so you're saying increase right yeah and it's an asset how do you increase an asset you just go to the debit side okay you debit it yeah so you go to your office this is what letter j so it's what 5800 So if you find it, where is it at? There it is. So notice we debited office furniture 5,800 and then there's the credit right there. So bought office furniture, by it's an asset, you're increasing it with the debit and you're also increasing a liability with the credit as well. This 2,900 when we debited, you're just paying some of what you owe. That's what that debit means for accounts payable. Okay, all right, anybody else? on any of this. Okay, one more thing on this particular problem and then I wanna talk about the study guide and then I wanna do another problem that's very similar to this again with you. All right, so another thing, I, I've been saying all the time tonight that your debits have to equal your credits, okay? Another thing you need to know and understand is again, the concept of an account balance. Now, you'll notice in this problem, every time we entered a debit or a credit, it doesn't matter what account we did this for, you'll notice that at the very bottom of the T account, they gave you the balance. They did all the math for you. And what I just wanna make sure before I leave this problem, I wanna make sure again, you know how to get, a, get an account balance. Let's say you had to do this, like on the exam, 
And let's say they didn't give you that account balance. You may have to calculate it manually just to make sure you know how to do it. So let's just look at accounts receivable. We've got two debits and we've got two credits and they're showing a balance of 15,000. So again, let's go back and let's show you how they came up with that. So here's how you do this. So what you do is, again, you got your debits and then there's your credits. You go ahead and you add up your debits. Our total debits here are $30,000. 14 and 16 gives you 30. My total credits are 15,000. So I've got debits of 30 and credits of 15. The balance is a debit balance of 15. How did they get that? All they did was they took 30 minus 15 and they came up with what they call a debit balance of 15,000. And I said that at the start, <clears throat> I think a week or so ago when I showed you the debit and credit rules, one of the things you gotta know is this thing called a normal balance of an account. And the normal balance of an account always means the increase side. So we know that all assets, if you look at the rules for your assets, assets increase with debits and decrease with credit. So the balance for all assets should always be on the debit side. So you'll notice accounts receivable is an asset. It's got a debit balance. That's what it should be. Again, cash is an asset. Notice the balance is on the debit side. So what all of you should do, even after tonight's class, is, is to maybe come back to this problem. Again, add up your debits, add up your credits, take the difference, the balance will always be on the increase side, which is, which is also the side that's larger. So your debits for assets should always be greater than your credits. Sometimes they're equal, but they, they can never be the other way. You, you should never see your assets where your debits, or, I'm sorry, where your credits are greater than your debits. They can't happen, okay? So again, this is a called an account balance. This problem, if I scroll down, you'll notice, again, Every one of these, when we entered an amount into the cell, they went ahead and just updated the balance right away for you. Notice expenses, there's only one of these, but anytime there are multiple debits and credits combined, notice accounts payable, again, which is a liability. Notice the balance is on the credit side, okay? Are there any questions on just the concept of a balance? That's a concept I'm just, you need to know. Anything? Are we good? All right. Okay. Now let me show you. So let me pause the problems for just a quick minute. And let me bring up the study guide. So let me take a couple minutes and I'll take some questions about the exam. And this is the format and how it's going to work. We'll talk about this for a few minutes. And then after that, then we'll come back and then we'll finish up. We'll do another problem. So first of all, the exam. So the exam starts Monday. Uh, it's 40, there's 42 questions. So you look at the study guide, so it's online. You go to connect, just like when you take your quizzes, you go to connect, it'll be, it's not out there yet, but I, I just have to open it up, but you'll go into connect, it'll say exam one. It's over chapters one, two, and three. It's 40 multiple choice questions. They're two points each, that's 80 points. And then there's two problems that are each worth 10 points each, that's 20. So there's where you get, there's where I got the 100 points. The essay type of problems is where you've got to do the, this T account stuff, which I just showed you, very similar to your test. This problem that I just worked um, is very similar to what you got to do in the exam, all right? You've got to do your T account analysis with debits and credits. That'll be one of the problems. And then another problem will be your financial statement. So you got to be able to, to prepare income statement, equity statement, and balance sheet. Now, it's pretty objective on the multiple choice. You gotta get one of them right. It'll grade that. And then when it comes to the, to the two essay problems, uh, they're worth 10 points each. You can get partial credit on those. And in some cases, I will manually go on and, and look at each of your, each of your problems because uh, even though sometimes Connect will grade them automatically, Sometimes I don't feel like they grade that the essay type of problems exactly like how I would grade them. 
So even when you first initially submit this exam and you'll get an initial score back, that score could possibly change once I've gone in and reviewed it, because I'll do that with everybody. Um, exam time is pretty generous. I give you two hours on this one. It's only over the first three chapters. You get two hours. Um, you've got beginning Monday, the September 28th, starting at midnight until the following Sunday, which is October, I think it's October 4th, I believe. I think I wrote that down. Let me look at my date. So you get a week to do it. You got Monday through Sunday. You can take the exam at any time that's convenient for you within that week. Okay, you do not have to take it on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Just make sure you take it by that Sunday, which is October 4th, I believe. You get seven days to take it, just like you log in, but this one is time. It, you do have a time limit, two hours, okay? So that's that part. Now, in terms of the concepts covered, I tried to give you a list of some things you should go back and review. You know, some of the stuff is from chapter one, talked about, you know, the, the legal forms of business, you know, sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, GAP, SEC, FASB, know the accounting equation. The rest of the stuff, you know, we're doing that right now. Everything here I've talked about. We've got study suggestions, which is your modules. Review your modules, chapters one through three. And that should cover. So this will be your exam number one, again, out of three. There's three exams in total. This will be your first one. So I give you a pause. We do three chapters. I give you an exam. And then we'll do another three chapters. And then you'll get another exam. And then the last exam will be whatever we finish up with. And in between, there'll be a project. But just if you're trying to you know, figure out where we're headed. So first exam, I hope everybody can get off to a good start. This will take place starting on Monday. <clears throat> so what that means about not just the rest of tonight, but also next week, next our next live virtual lecture session, which again is next Monday, September 28th, that is all review. All that night, I can go back and I can put up connect problems. I can review anything on the accounting equation, debits and credits. We've got two and a half hours, two hours and 50 minutes if we need it. Whoever shows up, if you need help, that's when I'm gonna be here for, for anybody, all right? So next week's class, we're not starting anything new, it's just reviewing. So I'm giving you not only tonight, I'm trying to go back over and help you, you know, finish up your knowledge of debits and credits, but next week is another kind of like a review night. And for some of you, if you don't need the extra review, and if you're okay with it, you don't have to worry about coming to next week's session. You can, in fact, you can even take the exam uh, during next week's session and get it done with it. That's how you want to do it. If this is your night, typically, if, if we were meeting on campus, that's how it would be. If this was an on-campus meeting and next week was our exam, you'd take it on campus next week. But because, you know, I'm trying to be a little more flexible, this is a lot of this is online stuff. I will give you a week time period uh, to actually get that test submitted. So as long as you got everything in by October 4th, after that, then we're gonna start the new stuff, which is really gonna be a continuation of what we just did in chapters one, two, and three. We're just gonna add the concept of what they call a journal and a ledger. We're still doing the same stuff, but we're, keep, we're still piling up the, the, the concepts here up until we get to chapter six. Can I ask a question? Yes. Okay, it says exam time, two hours. Yes. So if I start my exam and put it on hold, does it stop the time right there? I don't think so. So once I start I, it, I have to finish yep. it all the way. No, it okay. won't it keep on going with your time, even if you got it paused. There is no, on the connect stuff, there is no save later option. I think once you start it, that's when the time starts to, to tick away. Okay. okay. So I, I would suggest this for everybody who takes, when you take this, find a quiet time, give yourself up to two. And I don't know that it'll take you the full two hours. It may, it may only take you an hour. I don't know. Um, but I would find a time where you can, you got to devote two hours to this, just like if you were doing, if you were coming to class. And I'll give you seven days to do it. You pick whatever time is right for you. Everybody's got busy stuff going on. So the nice thing is, is you can pick your two hours. It doesn't have to be on Monday. I plan on using next week's class session 
to simply go back over anything for anybody that needs help. Okay. Once you take the exam, you will not get your you will get your score back, your initial score, but they will not let you review your questions until after the due date for obvious reasons. Okay. So what I do then is after that due date, I will review the scores. And then if need be, I may do some updates in terms of your, your two essay problems. So if they took points off or some things where I didn't think they needed to, I can, I can always go and adjust your individual exam score and give you extra points, give you some more partial credit, depending on what the issue is if you missed anything. Okay. So regarding the exam or next week, I'm saying this now because I know after once I get started on a problem, I don't want to go back over this. So right now, are there any issues or questions about the exam? What's going to happen on Monday, starting Monday? Or what's going to happen next Monday during our live virtual lecture session, um, which I'm just essentially reviewing anything from chapters two and three again. I'll, do, I'll work any problem. You just have to tell me whatever. And if nobody has any specific problems, I'll, I'll, I have a couple that I will show anyway, just for, for review purposes. Okay. But anything at all? Is, is this clear? Is it not clear? Let me know. And I will, again, if, if you go into Blackboard, this, this study guide, I went ahead and put this in an announcement. I'm going to, I'll go ahead and send it to everybody's email as well. And I'll also put another email announcement, just again, explaining the, the format for next week as well. I'll send you, I'll send you another email just make, just in case you forgot something for anybody. So check your student emails, in other words, after today. You'll get another announcement just detailing the exam specifics again. So I want to make sure you know exactly how the makeup of the test. I plan on all the exams to be in this type of format. We will have mostly multiple choice and probably a couple. They call them worksheet problems. It's basically kind of like this problem number 10 that I just worked with you where you've got to enter the debits and credits. Okay. So you can kind of think of the problem that I just worked with you on problem 10, I'm, I'm in a way kind of practicing how you got to do it on the test. But you got to be mindful of your time. I mean, you think two hours, you know, 40 multiple choice, some of the questions you'll get right away, but you got to have a plan to maybe do, the way I would do it is I would probably allocate about 50 minutes to the multiple choice to roughly, let's say, let's say 35 to 50 minutes on the multiple choice. And then the rest of the time, I would just devote to the two problems. That's how I would do it. Okay. If something happens with your internet connection or whatever, I'll work with anybody. I can reset, I can, I can do some stuff. So if something happens and let's say you got one question left and you get kicked out of the internet, something happens, that happens all the time. Just email me and I'll, I'll work with you. And that's not, I don't want you to be afraid of, oh my gosh, I'm gonna fail the class because my internet went out. Don't worry, I will work with you on that. I only tell you this, the fact that I'm telling you it's two hours, I would not wait until Sunday night to take it. Again, this is not this Sunday, but the week after. I, I guess that'd be October 4th, right? Or October 3rd, whatever. I would not wait till that last day and start at 10 o'clock at night. And you could technically start at 10 o'clock, but if you start at 10, you gotta, I mean, right at midnight, you're done. If you start at 1030, then you're losing a half an hour. You gotta start it before 10 o'clock on that last day. But the point is, is I don't know why anybody would wait until that late to take it anyway. You know, so I would, I would probably take it by Saturday or Sunday morning if you can, just in case. But if there's a technology issue, just email me and, and let me know if there's a problem. Sometimes I, I've tried to get in to connect and it won't let me. So I've had issues there just like you guys have as well. Okay. All right, anything else or anything about the study guide that I just showed you or about the exam specifics, anything else on what to expect? Uh -huh. Good. All right, cool. All right, so let me go back. Let me change. Oh, shoot. It logged me out. All right, let me go back into this problem real quick. 
in a minute, I'll, I'll change my screen. So let me show you the completed version of problem 10 that we just worked. All right, hold on, let me change my screen. All right, so again, last thing I'll say, and then, and then uh, I'm gonna pull up a textbook problem. So again, uh, the actual test problem, I mean, this guy's, this is a long problem, by the way. I mean, we have transactions A through S. I wouldn't expect the test problem to be quite this long if you had to do something like this, but these type of transactions are what you're gonna have to be able to do on the test. And you'll have to do the same debits and credits. They'll give you the T accounts. You just gotta enter it in the appropriate debit or credit. Okay. All right, I think I've said enough about that. All right, so next up, I'm gonna go into your book and let's go back to chapter three. All right, and I wanna go to, this is transaction, sorry, this is problem 3.4a, where it says, using T accounts to record all business transactions. It says the following accounts and transactions are for Vincent Sutton Landscape Consultant. And it says analyze the transactions, record each in the appropriate T account, identify each entry in the T accounts by writing the letter of the transaction next to the I'm not gonna to worry too much, about, too much about that. I'm concerned right now to make sure you get the right account names. Now you'll note, because some of you have already asked me today or tonight or even last week, is they, you get a little confused about well, what, what, what accounts make up this? Well, guys, look, check out this problem right here. The asset accounts they're using is cash, accounts receivable, office furniture, and office equipment. That's pretty clear, okay? That's all they're using. So anytime you have assets involved, these are the four accounts they're gonna use. For liabilities, it's just one account. Accounts payable is all they're using. For equity, you've got a capital account and a drawing. Revenue, they're using fees income. And then they've got five expenses. You'll have the same thing on the test. You'll know the account names, which are very similar to these. But this is a good illustration if you're wondering what are assets? Well, these are your asset accounts. These are the ones they're using. These are the common assets we've been using up to this point. The only one I would say that's not on here would be like supplies. Usually you'd see supplies or even maybe a prepaid item. But that's the only one that I see with, that, that's missing that you could also have possibly on a test question. All right, so if you go to this, you'll notice this one again. In fact, I think I meant to pull it to be. So and this is actually the same problem that that one is, but just so you know, I meant to pull up the, the problem B. It's the same problem. You'll notice, again, it's, it's the same one. I don't know why I said problem 3.4. The guys, it's kind of funny. That's the exact same problem that I just did for you in the Connect homework, by the way. But notice it's the same thing. Here's your asset accounts. They've got cash, AR, office furniture, office equipment. Here's your automobile. Notice those are five assets. You've got one liability. And again, here's your equity, uh, fees, income is your revenue. And then they're giving you all the expenses. No, on this one, they don't give you a miscellaneous expense. So if I look at this, and then of course you've got transactions A through S, and what I'm going to do here in a minute is, is I'm going to bring up move this over. I'm going to bring up my T accounts, and what we'll do is uh, we will analyze these in a T account format. So let me minimize this. And even though it says 3.4a, it's the same account. So other than, hold on, let me, let me switch this up for a second. I think one of them might be just a little bit here. All right. So give me just a quick minute and I'm just fixing something. Hold on.
and by the way, this problem that I'm getting ready to, to go over with you, um, you can, you have all the solutions to these already for you anyway. You've got all these answers for you in uh, Blackboard. But I think it's helpful just to kind of walk you through more of these, you know, at least for tonight's class, just for our, just for practice purpose. All right, so let me bring this over. I think I got it set. All right. I can scoot it over. Hold on just a second. Give me just a moment, be patient with me. My, my screen locked up, so just give me a quick second and I will get this fixed, hold on. All right, hold on just a sec. There we go, all right. I had a screen open and it was blocking me, so all right. So here's what we've got. And I tried to put these on side by side. Let me make sure you can all see this. Okay, so Again, this is transaction, or sorry, problem 3.4B. And I clicked a button there, there we go. All right, so sometimes I just hate the technology part. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'll put, put up part of it so you can see it. If I page down, it may, see how it kind of moves it a little faster. So we'll start with letter A. And my point is you can hopefully see that all these T accounts are already set up for you. All right, just like they'll be on the test. So let's go through these again, one on one, one on one. And then let me know if you hopefully, if you don't get it, you're hopefully seeing some consistency with the previous problem we just talked about. Okay, so problem one, part A. Brian Carter invested $150,000 in cash to start the business. So you're thinking cash and investment is of course going to be capital. So when I go to cash, everybody should be thinking cash is going to be doing what? Increased or decreased? Increase. Increase. Debit. It means debit. So I do debit cash, 150. And then what account would I credit? Capital. Capital. So there's 150 debit to cash. And then you have 150 credit to capital, all right? The fact that we've seen this one several times, does anybody have any questions on how to deal with an investment of cash? Okay, part B, paid the rent, 8,500. Again, paid 8,500 for current month's rent. Everybody's thinking paid means cash. And if you think cash, let me get my stylus. Remember, this is like, remember you've got assets equals liabilities plus equity. Cash should be increased or decreased? Decreased. 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 <laughs> and by the way, decreased means credit, right? And then we have to debit something else. It's gonna be what? Prepaid rent. Okay. That's what I would normally say too, but if they had said in advance, which is the key words, if they had said paid it in advance, then they're wanting you to put it in a prepaid. If they said it just like this, where you're just saying paid current month's rent, they actually want you to put that in the expense account. Okay. We'll deal with the adjustment. There's a, a chapter later on, we'll deal with the, what they call adjustments that we'll make to the prepaids later on. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and put that into rent expense. So, what you do then would be debiting your rent expense and crediting cash. So cash gets credited for, I guess it'd be what, 8,500, there's your credit. And then I'm looking for rent expense, which I think it's on the next page. There it is, debit 8,500. So a credit,
there it is. Sorry, a credit to cash, I lost the page, and then a debit to your rent expense, which for some reason it moved it over there. All right, I can move it right back there. There we go. Okay, so there's your debit to rent expense, and then here's your credit to cash. So you got one debit and one credit to cash already. Okay, so that would be problem, or sorry, transaction part B. Transaction C, it says bought a used automobile, 38,500 in cash. And so again, let me draw the equation. Used automobile and cash. So we know cash is involved and that's one asset, right? And well, we probably also think automobile will probably be our other asset. Would that make yeah. sense? I'll just put auto. So we got cash and auto, we got two assets. <clears throat> One asset increases and another asset decreases. Cash, cash is gonna do what guys? Increase or decrease? Decrease. It's gonna decrease. Decrease, does everybody say decrease? Mm -hmm. Yes, that means credit. Automobile therefore has to increase, which means debit. So you decrease cash, 38.5, increase automobile with a debit of 38.5. So that's how it hits the equation, and this is how it affects your debits and credits. So if I go to cash, I'll go ahead and put that credit in. And it'll be what, 38,500 credit. And then I'm looking for auto, it's right there. There's my debit. And then just enter the debit right there, 38,500. Okay. All right, questions on C, anybody? Good. Letter D, perform services in cash. Now, is everybody saying, have we seen this one before already tonight in the other problem? Yep. So perform services, guys, what account name have they been using for that one, for our revenue account? Fee income. Fee income. And of course, cash. So I'm gonna go to cash and everybody says debit or credit cash? Credit. Debit cash. I mean debit. All right. Debit, any questions on debit? Are we good? And then I'm looking for fees income, credit fees income, 21.5. Okay, there's your debit and credit. Questions on letter D. Does anybody want me to put up the equation as well? No, I'll, I'll do it. If not, I'll move on. Next one is a little tricky, letter E. It says paid 18.50, right there for auto repairs. 18.50 is gonna come out of cash. Can somebody tell me where this one's gonna go? We, we got cash, what's gonna be the other account? What do you guys think? Auto repair. Well, let's go back, let's take, take a look. What are our different expenses we've got? You got auto expense. Yep. Does everybody see that? That That's a pretty good one. I, I, I'm definitely thinking automobile expense. But the reason I said this one's kind of tricky is in the past, I've often had students think that they would debit or they, they, they'd put this amount into automobile. And remember, they're not buying another automobile. They're just making some repairs, which is maintenance. Okay. So on this problem, we're going to have it's for 1850, so we're gonna have cash. We should all say credit cash, 1850, and then debit auto expense, 1850. So there's your debit, and then there's your credit to cash. Okay, that's letter E. All right, I'll keep going if there's no questions, good. Okay, letter F, perform services 12-8 on credit. 
Perform services, everybody says, is what account? B income. B income. And then credit means, is it accounts payable or accounts receivable? Accounts receivable. Okay, does everybody else see that too, as accounts receivable? And even if you don't see it right away, if you went back and looked at what we just did earlier tonight, that's the same problem, exact same. We've got accounts receivable, which is increasing. And how do you increase accounts receivable with the debit? Debit accounts receivable. And then I'm looking for my, again, this one will be what, fees income. I believe it's on the next page. So fees income, you would credit it again for 12,000. <laughs> 800. So credit fees income, debit accounts receivable. That's letter F. Okay, I'll keep going. Letter G. Purchased office chairs on credit 6,500. So here's where it gets a little tricky because people you see this on credit, they use that all the time, but it's either going to be accounts payable or accounts receivable. Accounts receivable always goes with performing services, which is revenue. Accounts payable always goes with something that you're buying, which that's what they're doing here. So this credit is gonna be accounts payable, not accounts receivable. So if you purchased office chairs, we know that's gonna be office equipment, right? Which is an asset. And then we're going to be incurring debt, which is increasing our debt. So if I start with office furniture, should I debit it or should I credit office equipment? Right, hold on. Nope, sorry. I said office equipment. I'm sorry. That should be office furniture. You're going to debit office furniture. Office furniture. I'm sorry. Scratch what I said. It's, this is furniture, not equipment. So you're right. You're debiting office furniture. And that'll be for the 6500 And then I'm going to credit accounts payable for 6500 So here's your debit to office furniture, and then there's your credit to accounts payable. Okay, letter H, receive 6500 from a credit client. Receive money, right? Receive cash. That means cash is increasing. That means cash has to be what? Debited or credited? Debit it. You got it. So if I debit cash for 6500 what am I going to credit? And it's not going to be fees income. You're going to uh, accounts payable. And it's, uh, and it's not going to be accounts payable. Not like accounts receivable, but... It should be accounts receivable. Okay. So let's stop, let's stop on this one. It's gonna be a credit to accounts receivable. So let, let me write this one out. So here's what they're doing here. So from an, an accounting equations perspective, we've got cash and AR, right? We're increasing cash and decreasing accounts receivable. We're simply taking some of this money right here and transferring it over to cash. They're basically sending us the money. So we're gonna be debiting cash, crediting accounts receivable, two assets affected only, that's it, okay? All right, questions on that one? And of course, we've seen this one already. So this is another repeat transaction that we've already seen, seen tonight where they did a collection. All right, letter I. Pay 4,200 to reduce the amount owed for the office chairs. So if I paid 4,200, what, what am I doing to cash? Deputy, um, you're, 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 you're crediting cash. Credit. Okay, credit. And if you didn't say credit right, right away, go back a step and say, okay, cash is being increased or decreased. And you should say decreased. So if I'm decreasing cash, it has to be credited. So if I put a credit to 4,200 to cash, I have to debit something else. What am I going to debit? 
Accounts payable. Accounts payable. So I go to accounts payable and I'll go ahead and put a debit of 4,200. So here's a case where if you had to write this up if this was like, you know, chapter two, there's an equation. We'd say cash in this case is going down and our accounts payable is decreasing, both of them. So to decrease cash, it's a credit and to decrease accounts payable would be a debit. And both of them, again, would be for 4,200. So your equation balances and your debit and credit is also balanced. Okay. All right, that's letter I. Questions, anything else on I? Letter J, issued check to pay the utility bill. So by issuing a check, what do we do to cash? Decrease cash. Decrease, so therefore, debit or credit? Credit. No, credit. Credit, very good. So I credit cash, 1610, and I'm looking for an expense. There's my expense, use utilities expense. And of course, it has to be a debit. Debit your utilities expense, credit cash. All right, letter K gets interesting. Letter K, we purchased office equipment 22.8. Paid half in cash, the balance is due in 30 days. So office equipment. You debit office equipment. Let's go to office equipment. You say debit, it means increase. Twenty-two eight, and then paying half in cash. So how much goes to cash? How much gets credited in cash? Eleven thousand. Eleven thousand four hundred credit in cash, and where's the other credit go? Accounts. There you go. All right. So let me write this one out because it's got multiple things going on here. So we've got. Assets equals liabilities plus your equity. You've got office equipment being affected. That's an asset. You've got cash, another asset. And you've got accounts payable, which is a liability. You've got equipment, which is increasing. Cash, which is decreasing. And accounts payable, which is increasing. So we'd be debiting equipment, crediting cash, and crediting accounts payable, right? 22.8 goes to equipment, 11,004 goes to cash, 1,004 <coughs> goes to accounts payable. That's how it would fit into the equation as well. Okay, that's what I just ended. All right, anything else on letter K? No. Okay, letter L. Issue check to pay salaries. Again, another repeat transaction we've seen already tonight. Issue check means cash. Salaries is going to be an expense. So if I go to cash, I'm going to say debit or credit. It decreases. Cash decreases. De decrease, which, mean, which means credit. And then your salaries expense has to be debited. Debited. Okay. Now, letter M and N, just like before. Two of them, both of them are performed services. One is cash, the other one is credit. So, performed services cash on this one, on 94.50. Debit cash. We'll say debit cash, 94.50, increase cash, and then go to fees income. You credit fees income. And credit fees income. On letter N, I would, again, let me erase that arrow. It's a credit revenue, which is going to be accounts receivable. So you go to accounts receivable, not cash. It's still going to be a debit because you're increasing it. So you'd say debit, accounts receivable, 6500 and then credit 
fees income, 6,500. All right, that's letter N. All right, letter O, paid the telephone bill, 1,076, cash and telephone expense, right? And they've got a telephone expense right here. So since I'm on this page, we know telephone expense, just like all of our expenses so far, we debit them every time. So there's your debit to telephone expense. And of course, cash has to get the credit, 1,076. All right, letter P, collected 4,200 on accounts receivable. So accounts receivable is now going to cash. Collecting meaning you're getting the money, increasing cash. Therefore, what do you do to cash? Debit cash. Debit. So if I debit cash, this is for 4,200. I then credit accounts receivable for 4,200. All right. Letter Q, bought some more office equipment. It says received a bill for 6880 due in 30 days. So additional office equipment, we got office equipment, meaning increase, so we're going to debit it. And then due in 30 days, meaning we have 30 days to pay, that's gonna be a liability. So it's gotta be accounts payable. So I'll go to office equipment and we'll put 6880 on the debit side. And then I'll go to accounts payable and put 6880 on the credit side. Mm -hmm. All right. Questions on anything so far up to this point? I mean, it's not like the twilight zone. I mean, this, these are almost the same problems that's, that was in your homework, right? They just changed the amounts. In fact, every transaction on here is, is letters A through S. It's pretty much the same problem that's in your Connect homework. It's just that this problem, they just changed the numbers. So we're really practicing the same thing that I just showed you earlier in the first half of tonight's class. But any, any questions? I mean, I'm just trying to point out that there is a lot of repetition with a lot of the problems. So again, the hope is, and with any class, with any math-based type of class like this, in a sense, um, just by pure practicing some of these problems over and over again, you'll start to get familiar with how it's worded. Okay, two more. Uh, letter R says paid 900 in cash for gasoline purchased for the automobile. So of course we know cash, right? We got, hope we got this point now. Cash being paid, we know we're crediting cash, we're reducing cash. Question is, is what do we debit? Do you guys see anything about? Is that uh, automobile expense? Automobile expense. So <clears throat> I put $900 debit to auto expense, right? I'm surprised they didn't say gasoline expense or something like that, but just put it under auto. It's auto related. All right, very last one. It says the owner withdrew $8,000 in cash for personal expenses. We know that that's got to be an, a credit to cash again, reducing cash for $8,000. And then the debit, does anybody remember what the debit account would go to? That's the draw. The drawing. And that's it. That's letters A through S. And now that I've just done that, let me increase my screen. I can put the other problem back, but we that's all of the problem right there. We've done all the analysis. And that's really the first, that's the first part of this, this part of the test is I'll just have you do a problem where you'll have to do all this. And then at some point in the problem, they also might ask you to get the account balance. So let me do this one with you. Then I'll give you guys a couple minutes to do the calculations. I want you to show me that you can do this, but Let's just look at, uh, let's look at accounts receivable. So notice we've got two debits and two credits. And they want you to put the balance. It's an asset. So remember to get 
the balance, you add up the credits and you add up the debits and then you take the difference between the two. So for example, on this one, if I were to add up, so let me do it, add up my debits, I get 19,300. If I were to add up my credits, I get 10,700. At that point, I just take the difference, I subtract the 10,007 from the 19,3, I would have a debit balance of 8,600. Let me just try to increase this just for a moment. Make that in bold. I'll put a big bar on it. Does anybody have any questions on what I just did on how I got that balance? Or what, at least on the process. If so, what's the question? What's it? All right, so guys do this for me. And this will be the longest one because this had the most transactions. I'll give you a couple minutes. Give me the balance for cash. All right. You've got one, two, three, four, five debits. You got 10 credits. So five debits, 10 credits. You got to add up your debits, add up your credits, take the difference, and then give me the balance. I'll give you a minute or so to give me the number. Let's see if you can get it. The numbers are small for me. Can you not see them? Let me see if I can increase it. Okay. That's a lot better. Is that a little bit better? Yeah. So give me the balance for cash. I got uh, 191,650 for the- uh, The debit side. Debit side, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let me double check that. Anybody, anybody not get that? 191,650? Mm -hmm. That's right. So can somebody mm -hmm. add up the credits? Mm. 93136. Let me double check you. 94936. Nine, six. Yes. Okay. That's correct. So if you add up your debits and you get 191650, and you add up your credits and you get 94936, what's the last step we have to do to get the final balance? The normal the subtract. Okay. So and just remember you always subtract the larger from the smaller. So 96714. Okay, let's see if that's right. There you go. And it, and you should say debit. Yes, debit. There you go. You got it. Very good. So let me just say, if you can understand how to get this balance and you can say 96714 debit balance, then you can do it for any of them, doesn't matter, because it's the same process. Accounts receivable had a debit balance of 8,600. You'd say cash has a debit balance of 96714. Any questions on that? Okay, here's a tough one, guys. What's the balance for office furniture? 6,500. Pretty easy, right? If that's the only transaction, then that's the balance. It's a debit balance. Uh, what about office equipment? What's the balance? 22,800 plus uh, 6,880. I mean, yeah, 6,880. Yep. All right, so if you add those together, you should get 29,680 on the debit side. Okay. 
auto is the same. It's just the debit balance. Capital is a credit balance. Uh, what about accounts payable? Mm -hmm. You got one debit and three credits. Going to be on the credit side. Yep. Yes. If I add up my credits, I get twenty-four seven eighty. I got one debit of forty-two hundred, so I should subtract, 10, right? Ten three two zero. What? I got twenty-five eighty. Well, I'm I'm trying to go fast. No problem. I'll just. I'm, I'll pause for a moment. Everybody just have your calculator out and just make, just do it, jot it down, make sure you can do it. Yeah, that's correct. 2580. Again. Add up the credits, subtract Credit. one debit, and you should get that as notice us on the credit side. Okay. Let's see. That's those. I think on the other one, again, let me increase this so you can you can see it. The only one you have to do any calculations for is for fees income. Yes. And auto expense. So for fees income, I'll just do this. You just you guys all know how to add. You just add it up. It's yes. 50,250. Automobile expense, same thing. There's only two debits. This add them up. It's 2750. Everything else, there was just one transaction. So that's the balance. Yes. Okay. So I'm hoping, are there any questions after this? Because I want to, last thing I want to do on this is, is just briefly do the financial statements. But are there any questions on any, from anybody, again, on how to get the account balance on any of the accounts? Okay. All right. So guys, so back to this problem and then, and then we'll look at the financial statement. So let me enlarge this. So you go through this, this is what an accounting system does. And it's, every system is set up to account for any businesses transactions. You'll have debits and credits. You'll have all these different accounts happening. You have revenue, you've got expenses, you have all this stuff going on. So it's the job of the accounting department, the accounting software, what it's going to do is, the stuff I just showed you, you'll have a system that's gonna record all these debits and credits. And so all these T accounts in some form or another is gonna be summarized in an accounting system. And th this is just a little simple problem, but you can imagine, you know, if you're talking about like a company like Amazon, that definitely has to have their records in order because you know, that's a publicly traded company they're going to have an accounting system that's set up that's going to keep track of all this and most of this stuff probably about 90 percent of it or more is all automated so there's nobody nobody's sitting around a desk doing what we just did right now drawing out a t account and saying debit cash credit accounts receivable all right that's basically a default that's going to be an automatic debit and a credit in any accounting system the point is is you still need to understand it because at some point in time, you need to understand how the financial statements work together, but also mistakes are made and sometimes you have to go in and, and, and make corrections. So you still have to understand all this stuff because most of the stuff I'm showing you right now is all automated at most companies, most even small businesses. Nobody is being paid to manually debit and credit any of this stuff. In fact, if they are, they should call me up. I can save them a lot of money because you just buy QuickBooks or you buy a little account. <laughs> software. It, it, it's it's going to do it so quickly for you. But the point is, is by going through something like this, it's going to help you understand these type of systems when you start to use them. You'll know what a debit and a credit means. And that's important. Okay, now, once we've got this, let's say then we wanted to do the financial statements. So the next problem this is problem 3.4B. Uh, problem 3.5B is basically preparing uh, all these income statements from 3.4B, all right? So let's assume we're gonna do the income statement and the equity statement and the balance sheet. 
So on problem 3.5b, and let me just enlarge this because I'm not going to retype all, the, all these in. But let me just show you this because this is already done. But this is the trial balance. <clears throat> all these numbers right here, okay, all they did was they just went to cash. They went to the cash T account. And let's make sure we got that same number. If not, we screwed something up, right? I messed something up. Let's go back. See this 96714? Yep. All they did was is they just plugged that into a debit column on your trial balance. In fact, notice they just went to each T account and pulled the balance that's given. All these are the balances we just came up with. They added up the debits. They added up the credits. Notice your debits equal your credits. And again, you can go back and check each one of these. All these amounts, these are the numbers that we would have come up with that I just showed you in the previous uh, slide. So again, let me go back to the, to the T accounts. And just, just trust me, all these balances that I just showed you, these same balances, accounts payable, 20580 there's your accounts payable right there. They just pull that in. There's the 20580 They put it in the credit column. And they added up the debits, added up the credits, and your balance. So if anything ever comes up on a quiz or an exam where they ask you about a trial balance, this is all they do. You just list the accounts, and then you pull the individual balance from each T account, and then add them up, and then your debit should equal your credits. All right. That, by the way, is not a financial statement. It's just a tool to prove that your debits equal your credits. Now to your income statement. Now, yeah, this, this is the answer, but let me go back and just, again, if you're trying to copy all this down, all you gotta do, th this, just open up your handout or your, open up your solutions manual from chapter three and go to this problem. You got this already in Blackboard, but let me just start with this. And this will just save us a little bit of time because I know it's, it's getting late of an evening. But notice, we've got the income statement. It says month and in April. The only thing that goes on the income statement is your revenues and your expenses. So they went to the fees income T account. They pulled in that 50,250. Then they simply just listed all of your expenses. And guys, it doesn't have to be in this order necessarily. Just make sure you get all your expenses. Again, you're pulling each from your T account. You're gonna subtract out the expenses from the revenue. In this case, they got net income because your revenue was more than your expenses. So if you're on the exam and you get an exam problem that says prepare an income statement, your first question should be, well, what goes on an income statement? Well, it's just your revenues and your expenses. That's the only two things. So again, if you go back, you just have to go back to your T accounts and here's your T accounts. There's your fees income, that's your revenue. And then here's all your expenses right there. That's it. Revenues minus your expenses is on your income statement. So once you've done that, that's financial statement number one. Now, let me show you the next one again, it is your equity statement. And again, let me increase this so you can see it better. On this one, you note the formula. It's beginning capital. Here's your net income. You add that from your income statement subtract out your withdrawals, and then that's the increase or the decrease to capital, and then that's gonna be your ending capital. This 150 was that initial investment they start. I feel like they should have started with zero, and they should have said add investment of 150. It doesn't matter, you're gonna get the same answer. But for this one, since this is how they started the business, they said, okay, you start with 150,000, you add your income statement number, which is net income, and then this number is a withdrawal. That's actually a negative. And your withdrawal is just your drawing account from right there. There's that $8,000 right there. So once you do this, 150 plus 17,414 minus eight would give you the 159,414. Now, this is your statement of owner's equity. Notice your dates, again, month ended. This now balance of capital of 159,414, 
that's going to be the balance now on your income statement. I'm sorry, on your balance sheet. So the last financial statement is right here. Notice there's that balance right there. There's that same number that we just calculated from your equity statement. Everything else, you just have to list them. You've got your assets, list them. These are the balances from your T account. This is the balance. You have one liability account, which is 2580. You add your liabilities plus your equity. You add up your assets. This is this essentially this is your accounting equation right here. Notice 179994 equals 179994. You're in balance. This is your balance sheet. Notice it has one date only, one specific date, April 30th. It does not say for the month ended. It just says on this date, this is where we are. Okay. So my point is, is you'll get some stuff like this on your exam where all you're going to have to do is you'll have to click a drop down arrow and select cash. You'll click the click a drop down arrow and select accounts receivable. But you're going to have to enter these amounts from your T accounts when you do this. So quite like, quite honestly, you'll have to do an income statement, an equity statement, and a balance sheet. Okay in addition to your T accounts. That'll be, a, I mean, essentially I'm telling you what the two problems are right here. No, no doubt about that. So I'll try to practice with you tonight to show you, again, just do the debit or credit analysis. I tried to show you a little bit how that fits in with the accounting equation. And then I also want to again get to this, this is the last step, but really probably one of the most important things, because remember if accounting cannot make the numbers meaningful, then it's just raw data. You have to make this information so that it's meaningful to make decisions. Meaningful meaning, how much money are you making? They're making $17,414. You know, what's their cash balance? 96714. Things that management looks at is, is, for example, do you have enough cash, for example, to pay your debt? And of course, very clearly, if you got $96,000 in cash and we owe $20,580, there's no doubt they definitely have enough money right now to pay their bills. So that's kind of like how you would use this to make some decisions about your liquidity and your ability to stay open. Can you pay your debt? Okay. So your financial statements make these numbers stand out. They make them at least it puts it in a format that the investors and the creditors and management can then use that information then to make decisions. Okay. All right, so let me go back um, on this problem. Again, this problem does it all again, just like the previous one. But again, the one thing that this problem did that the one in Connect didn't do, this one actually took it one step farther and we actually did your three financial statements. Okay. All right, so any questions on any of the financial statements? Any, these are the three financial statements that you'll be responsible to know and how to do on the upcoming test. Anybody, any questions on what I just showed you? You said the owner's equity statement is the beginning capital plus the net income minus the drawing? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Anything else? Very good. No? I don't know. Is anybody feeling a little bit better about the debits and credits after tonight? Yeah. yeah. Is anybody feeling worse? No. And if you are, that's fine. I mean, I'll say that's fine, but here's essentially what I'm doing. Well, of course, we got a few more minutes to go, but I intend for next week's class, for those that need it, to simply be a, just a review, a review session for for our time period, seven to nine thirty, nine fifty, whatever, um, because the test goes live starting next Monday. And if you want to use next week's class time to actually do your exam, that's fine. You can do it. Get it done. And then if, after that, then the following week, then we're going to start chapter four. If even after tonight, man, you just you, you want some more help and you like to see, you want to do some more Q and A with me, that's fine. Remember, the test goes live on the twenty eighth of September. But you have, and I think until October 4th to take it. So you could go next Monday, come to class, ask me questions. I can work whatever you want me to go back over. Just 
be honest, ask me questions. That's fine. I'll do anything you want me to do. And then you could take the test on Friday, whatever, how it fits, fits into your schedule. Just make sure you get it done by Sunday. Okay. And hopefully you're, you're seeing tonight, I mean, I, I almost think that you could combine chapters two and three. But, you know, I, I understand why when they're, when they're building the foundation of accounting of why you do the accounting equation first before they add the debits and credits because they want you to kind of practice saying increase this or decrease that, you know, increase asset, increase liability. They want you to get into that mindset first, and then they add the debit and credit rule on top of it. So really chapters two and three are really the same chapter in terms of the transactions. It's just that chapter three is adding the debit and credit rules to it. Okay, that helps any. All right. Questions? Does anybody have, did it help earlier tonight when I put up my morning class? They liked the fact that I put up um, the Connect Homework problem and it helped them see exactly where they needed to enter stuff. Did that help anybody tonight? When I went yes, to yes, mostly I don't know how they want it formatted. Okay. And that's what I struggle the most with is I know the numbers, I don't okay. know how they want me to punch them in. So if you kind of, even after tonight's class, because um, I didn't do that the first few weeks, but because um, you, know, you know what I did before the semester started is I went ahead and I recorded all of the answers and I, did, I just did comments, but I didn't actually go through and, and, and work each of these problems out individually. So when you play my Connect videos in Blackboard, yeah, I'm commenting on them, but I'm not actually working them out one by one I'm just kind of showing you how, they, how to do it in a sense. And then of course you still have to go in and do it. But what I'll try to do even after tonight is every time we meet, at least try to bring up one or two of the homework problems and just make sure I go through a couple of them just, just, just so you see what you need to do. I mean, you guys remember, I'm, I have essentially given you all the answers to the homework. I mean, you could literally just go into Blackboard and put pause on and look at the answers and, and just copy them in and get the correct answer. And it, Hopefully you're seeing at this point that that's not going to matter when you get to a test. You still have to be able to take a test and, and think. But, you know, I, I want you to still see these answers. My intent is for homework to be just keep working until you get it right. That's how you learn. Um, the quizzes, yeah, you still, you, you got to perform on the quizzes. You still got to get those right. You get two chances on those. But, you know, on the homeworks, you get unlimited attempts. But I agree, um, until you actually go in and start to try to input stuff, sometimes it's not always clear. Uh, what cell they're wanting you to input in. I, so I'll try to, you know, from now on, um, make sure I bring up at least a couple homework problems just to make sure you guys know where to go to do the inputs. I'll try to do that. But, um, and even next week, I can do that as well. I mean, you know, I, tonight I looked at what, problem 10, and I think some of the other ones, uh, if I go back, I, mean, I think I got kicked out of there, so I'm not going to, but you know, if I went back, um, I could always go back and do another homework problem or just add another one and just practice one with anybody next week. But that, that'll be, again, whoever shows up next week's class, it's all review. So I would probably approach this week like this, and this is for everybody, is I would, I would go, go through the study guide. You know, of course, you got to get your chapter three stuff done first. I mean, your chapter three assignments are, not, are, are due Sunday. You guys realize that chapter three homework and quiz is due by Sunday. So once you kind of get past that, I would also be thinking about prepping for the test even right now. Start to think about things you need to be studying. And then of course, next Monday is simply, I'll go back over anything, chapters one, two, or three, anything you have any questions on. I'll try to pick a couple problems to illustrate again. And just to give another feedback and see where you're at. And this is for anybody. And then um, and of course, who's ever not here, whoever wants to take the test early, that's fine. But um, next week is just the exam. And then it'll be the week after that is when we'll start chapter four. We should be able to get, once, once we get into chapter four, um, chapter four is, pr is probably just one week only because that chapter is just showing you how the, it's just a format, how to, how, what a journal and a ledge looks like. It's still debits and credits. Nothing's changing really in that chapter. Chapter five, is where we'll probably spend, I'm, I'm guessing at least one, maybe two classes on chapter five. 
because that does the fun thing everybody loves. It's called accrual accounting and adjusting entries. But at this point, we're not worrying about that, but just make sure this is a pretty important test coming up uh, because it's really foundation stuff. All right. Okay. And when is the uh, test going to hit the, the, the uh, blackboard? Do what? I'm sorry. When is the, the, test, the preparation for the test going to hit the blackboard? Uh, well, the, the study guide is up there right now. Um, I went ahead and put it uh, in the announcement link. Let me show you this. Hold on. Yeah, it was there. Yeah. I just if, if you go into Blackboard right now, I just didn't send it out. I, in fact, I'll do that right now. I mean, I'll do it in a minute. I'll do it tonight. I'll send this announcement out tonight. The study guide is in the announcement link. The actual exam will not show up and connect until Monday the 28th. So you won't you won't be able to access it until Monday the 28th. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Anything else? I'm just at this point I'll just take any questions. Anything else you guys have questions or comments on? I don't have any other problems I'm specifically gonna work out unless you want me to go back. You've got one you want me, you want me to take a look at. But any questions on anything about the test? Uh, about prepping, about anything, about what to expect on Monday or the due dates. Remember, this week is, is chapter three to, to wrap up chapter three assignments and connect. I've got a question. When they talked about uh, if you make a, a, a error in the, uh, in the journal, you go through and you strike through it? Well, <laughs> um, Daniel, um, that's, since that's chapter four um, and we're not there just yet, um, I don't want to get into that just yet tonight, but since you asked, um, the, the way they show you how to correct an error is I'm going to show you how you really do it. You, you, nobody strikes through. I, I know what you're saying. I know the part in the, in the PowerPoint and that part of the chapter where when they talk about errors and how you fix errors, I will walk you through how you do it. But some of the stuff they show you, I don't always agree that it's necessarily the best way to show it. Okay. But don't, don't worry about that stuff yet. You will not have to do that on this week's stuff, okay? Okay. Okay. Yes, um, good, good point. Uh, and I've been, last couple of days, I've been trying to get uh, information on our tutor. And I know we have an online tutor. And the, here's what the problem has been, is our tutor needed Number one, the textbook, because they don't have, they don't have access to the e-text. So we got them a book, but the only holdup was the solutions manual to the textbook exercises. They needed that as well. And I believe they should have all those. I was told today that they should have those by tomorrow. So once I get all that, I am going to put up, there should be a link or an email of who the tutor is and I'm going to put that on our Blackboard side. So I'm going to send out an announcement to everybody. I've had at least three or four students ask me about the tutor. Okay. And so there is one. And I was told that they weren't ready yet because they didn't have all that information. And I just didn't know about that yet. So um, I should know by tomorrow. And if I can get that by tomorrow, I'm going to try to get their email. I'm going to put that out on Blackboard. I will send that to everybody. And then at that point, Hopefully that'll be at least, you'll have at least a couple weeks worth. You can set up appointments with this person and then get some extra help. All right. So I apologize I got, about the delay on that. I got a response to that. I'm yeah. a, I'm a, at the Merrimack campus. Now, they yeah. don't have a book there at, at the Merrimack campus, but they have the uh, accounting lab open. Yes. So um, is, is that considered in terms of where a book will be? It is. It is, but this, this particular tutor, I believe it's online too. I believe that, unless I, I'll try to find more information, but from what I was told is, is that they do one-on-one -on -one sessions with you through, through online, through Blackboard Collaborate or something like Zoom. Like <coughs> I don't know that, has, Dan, have, has anybody been actually going to the Merrimack Accounting Lab? I don't even know that they're open. Yes, I, I go. Is there somebody there? Yes, they got a tutor there. So there's somebody actually on campus in their tutoring. Do you, yeah. do you have to do you have to set up an appointment before you go? No. Okay. Well, and I think right now, if you have you have you gone this week or last yes. week? I went last week. Now, did they still help you? 
Yeah, they just didn't have a book. Okay, they, okay, and that's what that's what I was told. So um, I will get all the specific information, and I'll put that on Blackboard for everybody. Yeah, thanks, Daniel, for bringing that up. Um, I wasn't quite sure. Um, I wasn't told that that was actually going on right now because typically, you know, in the past it was kind of like you know we're Forest Park and they're Merrimack, and then you got Flow Valley, and so. We typically never told our students, oh, yeah, just go to Merrimack, go to their lab. But now since this is really kind of virtual, uh, I do know they do have a lab, but I wasn't sure that I thought it was all just virtual. But I'll talk to my chair about that and I'll get I'll put all that information up on Blackboard and post it. Good point. All right. Anybody else on anything? Mm -hmm. OK, well. A couple minutes left. Um, if you need to head out, that's fine. It's been a long day. Um, look for, again, a couple announcements. One, again, I'll send out the study guide announcement to everybody. Um, and I'll give some specifics, again, about the test next week. And then I will update the Blackboard site. It should be by tomorrow, because my, my department chair told me to wait. I, I think it was a week or two ago I asked them about uh, the tutoring. And they specifically told me that they weren't set up yet because they don't have the book and they don't have the solutions manual. So that's why I didn't bring it up. But, but I, if you actually showed up to the Merrimack Accounting Lab and try to get some help, they could try to help you, but they couldn't show you the correct answers, which is what, for some reason, that's what they wanted, to, you know, for until they told me the correct information. So I'll try. I'll definitely make sure I have all that uh, by tomorrow. So, okay. Right. Anything else from anybody? Are we good? Yeah. Okay, I do my best. I, I, again, next week is a review. I'll, I can do the same thing I did tonight if it helps, but study hard. Think of things to ask me, um, things you're confused about. You still got another chance next week before you have to really take the test. And again, don't forget to get that chapter, those chapter three assignments submitted by Sunday as well. Okay, guys? Thank you. Okay. Yep. I'm going to sign out unless there's anything else from anybody. Nope. Thank you. Okay. Thank guys. you. Good night. Okay. I'll put this recording up on Blackboard tonight so you can go back and take a look at it and then just check your emails for some upcoming announcements on the stuff I just talked about. Okay. I had, I had a problem getting in tonight and I don't know exactly what it was, but my screen had frozen. Mine's did too. Really? It was, was that uh, just getting into Zoom, right? Yeah. It happened when you was in session as well for me. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, sometimes, you know, technology, sometimes there's some glitches, but you, you were able to finally get, did you just clip, uh, keep clicking open Zoom meeting or something? No, I called I call the helpline. And, and what they do? Had one of the guys, uh, to, he, he got in and he walked me through after he got in. He just clicked, he just kind of clicked a link for you and let you get in somehow? No, no he clicked a uh, link on his side. And then had me to go in? back and 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 uh, restart my computer. Okay. And that way I got in. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess as we keep doing more of this every week, we might find a new problem. Next week, maybe there's no problems. I don't know. Um, but yeah, probably a good thing would be if 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 you can't get in, um, email me and maybe I'll either close the meeting and open it back up or maybe log back in and log back out and see if that helps. Sometimes that just fixes it for some reason. Sometimes it might kind of get in a loop and just won't let you, I don't know. I, this is the first time I've had that part happen. So I, you know, I, I'm not trying to, you know, I'll, I'll look, I'll look into that and see um, next time if that happens, what I might just do is I'll just close the session and open it back up and then see if that fixes it. That, that probably might have, might have happened. I don't know. So. Yeah, sorry to hear that, Daniel. I think maybe a couple other people might have had a similar problem tonight as well. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's, you know, I talk about this when I'm when we're meeting in person all the time. You know, if if we're so dependent upon technology, and guys, guess what? If if, if we were down in Texas or Florida and we had a hurricane come through and we had a power outage, guess what? We wouldn't be meeting because we can't meet if we don't have electricity. Right. And if we're using Zoom or Blackboard Collaborate or something and a website's down and something's going on, yeah, that, that hurts us. And that's, that's the part of where, you know, you just have to kind of, you know, sometimes I, I would hate to not have a class just because we can't get into Zoom. But, you know, that could happen. 
And so, so far we've been, I think they had Zoom issues. I think, I think it was like the first week of class. I think uh, the East Coast had a Zoom problem because everybody was in Zoom and that their, their server crashed or something. We didn't get affected here, but, but yeah. So I just, I just kind of kind of roll with it. And uh, I try not to get too frustrated. Um, seems like this is what week five and it seems like we've had pretty decent luck so far with it. It wouldn't surprise me if we get a couple where we might be, we might have a blackout for a few minutes. And, but trust me, I'll just keep trying to get back in the system if that happens. And if it gets to a point where if we have or have something where it seems like nobody can get in, I'll just try to send out an email announcement in Blackboard and let everybody know what's going on. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but you just, you know, contingencies, you just never know, right? So. Right. Okay, guys, everyone. Um, if there's nothing else, just check your emails, uh, check the Blackboard site, and then just email me if you have any problems or questions. All right. Thank you. All right, everyone. Have a good evening. All right.